Here is Wehrmacht Major General Edwin Graf von Rotkirch und Trock. He was a German leader in the Battle of the Bulge. It was his troops who surrounded Bastogne. American General Hugh Caffey, who defended Bastogne, here has the final word. And here is the German Folkstun. They were left to defend the town of Harm with one German rifle and one smashed and discarded Schmieser gun. When the Americans came, they hid their armament and surrendered without firing a shot. They showed where their hidden guns were to be found. They led troops to the riverbank where they had cached three old flamethrowers. This was the Folkstun that was going to fight to the last bullet and the last man. As the American armies drove forward to the Rhine, they were met by another army, an allied army that had struggled through five years of the most appalling hardships toward freedom. Poles, Czechs, Frenchmen, Russians, Yugoslavs. Some of them ill, some still suffering from wounds. All of them hungry, miserably clad and cold. These men, rotting in a German prison camp, had, on the approach of the liberating armies, risen and broken out made their way through the enemy lines toward their brothers in arms. Some had no word of home in five years. Some had worked in the German mines. But American medical authorities gave them help. The sick were cared for. The cold were given warmth. The hungry food. Some of the prisoners wept. The French silently refused their cigarettes and offered them to the Russians. A camp for Russian forced labor was overrun and freed. The women had been better cared for. They had been more useful to the Germans, but they too had been uncooperative, so they were locked in cages. Then they are told the astounding news from the Eastern Front, how their comrades are on the Oder, how Russia has come back from defeat. When Allied troops reached the camp at which they had been held, the story was plain to see, quite plain.